Madam President, distinguished guests, families and friends, graduates. Let me conclude this ceremony as pro-director by adding my own personal congratulations to you on this very special occasion. You did it. Well done. Congratulations. Now, graduation ceremonies are formal and they follow a British tradition that's developed over many centuries. Graduation symbolizes the move of the former student, the graduate, into the wider society as a graduate, ready to use your skills and knowledge and understanding. Today marks the day when we celebrate that transition, but also your extraordinary successes and achievements. Because whether you go on to further studies or to the world of real work, you are all now alumni of SOAS and you will all be part of the SOAS community. We take immense pride in the strong community we have here at the school. It's one of our defining characteristics. Students, staff, our many research associates and honorary members of the school are bound by shared ideas about the world, an intense curiosity about people and society and a desire to make a positive difference. Part of the difference we make is through our academic success. We address issues of global concern and aim to make great things happen through our research and teaching. Whether that's on issues related to public policy, like food and water security, or uh, gender discrimination, international human rights law, the role of Islam in, modern, in the modern world, or on issues that are less obviously policy relevant, but just as important, such as understanding the structure and evolution of languages, or maintaining musical traditions from the past, or studying world literature or film. We're delighted that last week, four of our professors have been elected as fellows of the British Academy, the pinnacle of academic achievement in the arts and humanities and a credit to their own work and to their departments. Our students, give them a round of applause, please. Our students are equally impressive. Yes, in their political activities and their enthusiasm, their collective strength, but also in their individual achievements. For example, economics student Sarah Bedford um, was joint winner this year of the London Entrepreneurs Challenge Provost Prize for a social enterprise project. Her initiative, called Eat and Greet, tackles social, inclu sorry, tackles social isolation in residential homes bringing together care home residents with groups of visitors over a weekly lunch. And meanwhile, PhD student in languages and cultures, Portia Owusu, has just won a highly prestigious Fulbright Fellowship, joining a community of scholars that includes more than 50 Nobel Prize winners and 75 Pulitzer Prize winners. Portia will be developing her research into English and American literature, slavery, and the West African diaspora at the University of Kansas in the next academic session. These are just some of the achievements that make me incredibly proud. They highlight the real impact that SOAS students make, and I hope that they will inspire you to achieve your goals on whatever path you choose to take. So what does it mean to graduate from SOAS? By graduating, you join a worldwide family of 50,000 alumni, most of whom are still in regular contact with us. We have authors, philosophers, musicians, TV presenters, filmmakers, comedians, human rights lawyers, restaurant owners, diplomats, journalists, MPs, criminals, political activists, <laughs> academics, you name it, and a SOAS graduate has probably done it. <laughs> and many of our alums, in turn, choose to give something back to the school. I'm not just talking about money. Though you may have heard of the recent £20 million donation from one of our alumni to support an ambitious new programme in Southeast Asian arts. Now, if you ever find yourself in such a robust financial position, <laughs> and no doubt some of you will, we'd be delighted to hear from you. <laughs> but just as important, many of our graduates give something back to the school in other ways. For example, our Take an Alum for Coffee scheme may have put some of you in touch already with our wonderful network of alums. 
for insights and advice about the wealth of different career paths that they have followed. We hope that you may be willing to do the same or help spread the word of SAS in other ways. So today does not mark the end of your relationship with SOAS. You are now part of this great community across the world, and we will follow your careers with great interest. For some reason, new SOAS graduates can be quite hard to reach, probably because you're all out doing amazing things. Please help us to keep in touch with you by giving the careers or alumni team your contact information today, either in the gowning area or in the marquee after the ceremony. These are challenging times for higher education and for the world. But the school has been through many tough years in its long history and it has come through with a combination of imagination, resilience and distinctiveness. We are working towards our centenary in 2016, which we plan to celebrate in proper SOAS style. The newly refurbished North Block of Senate House will open in June 2016. The building will offer state-of-the-art teaching and research facilities and student services. It will mean that SOAS will be, once again, a single-site campus with all that energy and intellectual curiosity that defines our community concentrated in a single, vibrant precinct. Senate House is the perfect launch pad for SOAS's second century. So do come back and visit the new campus once it's complete and especially in our centenary year between June 2016 and July 2017, when we plan to have some amazing events and activities on campus. And if you can't make it back to London, look out for the events that we'll be organizing around the SOAS regions, from China and India to Africa, the Middle East, and indeed North America. It's your school, so please do stay involved. Now, Grasa, in her speech, offered a few words of advice, and I can't resist the temptation to offer a few of my own. The first is, it is really never too late to learn. So don't regard leaving the school as the end of your learning journey. Regard it as the beginning. Why don't you try learning the dulcimer or the two-string Chinese violin? We'd love to help you. Second, Never be scared to make mistakes, but always make sure that they're new ones. <laughs> and finally, whatever you do, do it together, because together we're strong. Good luck with your future careers.